Howdy. Today is a day I've been looking forward to, because this is this is the part where we really get into the meat and potatoes, the kind of stuff that is very difficult to find information about unless you know where to look. And odds are, if you're just starting out, you don't know where to look. Today, we're going to be talking about functions. Now, the first thing I need to define is what exactly is a function? Well, think back, let me go to the file path real quick. Think back to these two functions right here. That's a backup file, so I don't need it. These are functions. There's a reason why I named this folder tutorial funks after all. So, I could potentially make more. So suppose I want to make a file called, I don't know, rng.mc function. Not nc. And it doesn't look it doesn't look like it works properly, but if I were to open this up in notepad plus plus, pardon me, then you can see it functions exactly the same as these other two. The only difference is that because I don't have it rigged up with the JSON files, it will not run every frame, and it also won't run at the start of the world or the start of the data pack. So the question then becomes. How the heck do you actually call this function? Well, now that I have this, let's load into our world. Excuse me. Let's load into our world. Welcome back to testing grounds, haha. And remember a while ago when I did slash function? Well, if you notice, RNG is here now. And if I were to call it, it would do absolutely nothing right now. But heading back over to Notepad, if I do say hi, reload, and then run it again, there you go. It says hi. So why would you want this? Well, the first reason is for clarity's sake, because I mentioned this earlier, but with the, let's see. With each of these, um, with the particles from earlier, what was happening was that it was calling this, this was the RNG function, but it was applying the same number to absolutely everything. So suppose that I wanted to, suppose that I wanted each zombie to have their own. Well, it's quite difficult. The first step, I think, if I'm understanding this correctly, is to copy this all into here. Then, excuse me for a moment while I grab, I'm cheating a little bit here and just plugging it in through the game console. Function, Kundalin Tutorial Funks RNG. So now, heading back over, if I were to reload, it should work exactly the same. See? No compiler errors, and it still gets the RNG value every time. Now, problem, again, is it these? Let me actually, give me a moment real quick, to bump up the size on this. Um, I don't know if this is the right place to change the size. I guess we'll see. Uh. Oh, I see. Three, three, three. There we go. Yeah, that's much better. So if you notice, so I'll spawn in a bunch of them. They share the same colors. So there is a way for me to do it, but it's, it's slightly complex. What I will have to do is make it so that every single zombie runs the tutorial function and calls the RNG function at the start of their function. This is going to be a common theme of functions calling functions, which also call other functions. So let me go ahead 
swap on over to file path real fast and create another new file, which I'm going to call zomb particle. And it's the same, as I, I mentioned it a while ago, but it's the same rules as the folder names that just don't use caps or special characters. I tend to just use lowercase and underscores, but it's, I think you can be a bit, a bit more creative than that. I'm not, I'm not certain. So what I want to do here is I will start by calling tutorial this function right here. And then line by line, let's copy in this bit. Execute. There we go. Something you could something to note that's interesting is you can actually use you can use execute commands. Oh bollocks. <laughs> okay. So I just copied the copy the RNG function. I need to stop doing that. I just copied the RNG function into this new file. And fun fact about execute commands is you can actually do execute without an as, and it'll just treat whatever's running it as the as. And then number two is this one. Um, yeah, I think that's correct. Now the final step is to change this data, or change this around a bit. Do at s run zomb particle. Now if I did all this correctly, when I reload, this stuff I don't mind having outside. If I reload, Notice the colors are all different now, like very slightly. You can kind of catch it. Let me change the colors to be a bit more wild, actually. So let me give me a moment. Let me do the primary three colors instead of the fire effect. Like so. It's either red, green, or blue. That way it'll it'll stick out. More. Oh my god, I keep tapping to the wrong thing. Ah! Uh, <laughs> my apologies. Uh, now, if you notice, it's actually working. Every single zombie is at a different point. This is something that you can only do with executing that, or with um, functions, rather. And this is can be extremely, extremely useful, but also very frustrating. But something else to keep in mind that is it's another problem that we're going to have to wrestle with. Uh, suppose the, consider for a moment the function cosine. A cosine is a function. It's a trigonometric function. And it takes in an input. Let's say 90 degrees, whatever. I can't can't really type out degrees here, but that's close enough. And it'll output some value. I believe it's zero. Functions cannot do that. At least not directly. They cannot take inputs. Which is quite frustrating, but there are ways to work around it. Let's head back over to the notepad. So suppose that I want, this is a very basic example, suppose I want to make a function that will take in an input, double it, and return it. What I want to do is, first I must make two things, tutorial, test, input, dummy input then output
Now that I have that, let's head over to the file and make our new thing. I'll just name it double that MC function. And then now that we have that, I will edit it with Notepad++. And then do execute as at. Oh, no, no, no. I don't even need to do an execute. I will do scoreboard layers operation. Wait. Scoreboard layers set at s. Yeah, it is. Storyl plus constant two. Operation at s tutorial test input times equals all right now that we have that done let's tab back over to the minecraft reload and then do function. We see double now. <laughs> We're seeing double. So now if I do scoreboard players set at s tutorial test input, let's make it 250. Why not? And let's do scoreboard players, oops, objectives rather. Set display sidebar. to be the output. Nothing's still showing right now, but if we were to do function double. Oh, <laughs> I didn't make it actually set the output. Let me give me a moment to fix that. Sorry for the black screen, or sorry for the blank screen. I'll just have to fix this real fast. Reload. And run it. There we go. The output is 500. If we were to run it again, because I'm not, I didn't do a great job at sanitizing the inputs, it'll double it again, and then again, and then again, and again, and again. All of this from the comfort of my own, of the, my own console. And just to show it off, I can keep going, and then next time it'll go negative. Boop. It kind of like clowns around like that until it reaches, because it was doubling over and over and over again by 250. Hmm. I don't actually know why it eventually canceled out. I guess it's because 250 by twos, you would think it wouldn't reach to the, thir to the 32, but I guess it did somehow. Maybe some there's some rounding nonsense or something. I don't, quite, I don't quite understand it. But let's do one more thing. Hmm. I'm trying to think what I want to do here. Ah, yes, that, that could work, actually. I'll do, this would be a nice little segue. Suppose I want this function to keep going until it doesn't spawn a particle. So from our end, it's just going to look like it's a little bit thicker. But let's do something like tp at s tilde tilde point one. So point one tilde, and then execute if entity at s scores equal four twenty eight tilt. Okay. Run function zob particle. Now this is something that you have to be 
extremely careful about, and I'm going to go into more depth about this in the next video, but this is what is known as a recursive function. It will call itself and do whatever it was just doing again. It's almost like a loop, because it, it basically is a loop. But apply it here and then reload. And it's kind of working. If I set the scoreboard to be back to RNG, oops, to be back to RNG, actually, let's do execute as at e type equals zombie at s run data modify entity at s no gravity set value one. It should start slowly rising in the air if I did this right. It's actually, it's not working. Weird, the, the no gravity thing is definitely working. God, that's so much good stuff. That's bizarre. Oh, I put it as negative. Okay, that's my bad. Now they should start floating. Right? Am I a fraud? I might be a fraud. Why is this not working, I wonder? Is it because it's calling itself? Let me try adding something real quick. And I'll let you know, oh, like, you'll be able to tell if it works. Oh god, all of the rare drop things are going to one mob. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. This is creating a, kind of a funny effect. Very weird. Whatever. Uh, next video, we will grapple with that. Iterative functions are very confusing. They're probably the most confusing thing that we'll work with. But they are invaluable for some very interesting things. But regardless, I think I've... I've talked to you. So I think I'll... I think I might just call it here. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, y'all.